Our first guest is one of the funniest men on TV, and he's not even on a comedy show. He's covering the Western Conference Finals on Inside the NBA for TNT. Please welcome NBA Hall of Famer Charles Barkley. Hi, Charles. What's up, Jimmy? How are you? Man, I'm doing good. Welcome back off of vacation. Thanks. You know what? You know I love you, and I really was happy that you agreed to be my first guest back to help ease me back into this. So thank you very much. <laughs> hey, listen, so you you were fly fishing, huh? I did go fly fishing, yeah. I know you like to fish. Do you fly See, I, fish? I, I've never been fly fishing. I love to fish. I, you got to teach me how to fly fish. I would love to do that. Just the two of us in a boat alone would be something very special. <laughs> No, no, we're not going on a boat together, brother. No. <laughs> then the deal's off. I don't know what to do. Hey, no, we can wade then. I guess we could wade. Yeah, I, you know what? I'm always up to learning new things. I've heard, I've seen fly fishing. I've heard about it. Uh, I normally like to keep my feet on land. I um, like lakes and ponds. But I've got so much respect for you. I'll go. Is it called wading? Yeah, wading. Yeah. Yeah. Why can't they just call it walking in water? <laughs> <laughs> I don't, they don't want to. No, seriously. They don't want to confuse That's... it with Jesus. I think is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> so Charles, did you watch? Are you the football game tonight? You know the the Raiders are playing in Vegas now, and I'm curious as to as an athlete, it, what would it have been like if you'd played in Las Vegas? Like if your home games were in Las Vegas, would that have worked? It would work for me. <laughs> it would have been a lot of fun. You know, Jimmy, listen, I love to gamble. Uh-huh. Also, it would have been awesome for me. <laughs> I think it, you know, it, it's different depending on the sport you play because, you know, football players go to work every day and they're for, there for like hours. Like in basketball, we're off until the next night. So uh, it probably would have been really strange yeah. Uh, I would have lost a lot of money. Yeah. I would have had a lot of drunk nights. <laughs> <laughs> Did you, in your travels to Vegas, I know you enjoy Las Vegas, do you ever go to, like, shows? Would you ever go see any of the, the big shows, or were you just in the casino the whole time? You know, Jimmy, for, for the last 30 years, I've been longer than that going to Vegas. Every time I go there, I say I'm going to go see a show. And 35 years later, I've never been to a show. <laughs> I, I get stuck at the blackjack table or the roulette wheel. <laughs> you, uh, I bet you've had some... What's the best time you ever had in Vegas? Anything pop in, into your mind? Oh, I had the Patriots one year when Seattle ran that stupid pass from the one-yard line <laughs> instead of giving the ball to Marshawn Lynch. And, you know, because, you know, I love... I go... I've been... To, I've been 23 straight years to the Super Bowl in Vegas. It's the best place to watch the Super Bowl. Uh, I, so that probably, what I thought I was over for me, and that guy called that awful play and threw that interception at the one-yard line. Yeah. That probably was my favorite trip to Vegas. Really? Why? Did you, did you have money on the other team, on the Patriots? I had money on the Patriots. Oh, you Jimmy, did? That's all foot. Hey, that's all football is good for is betting. <laughs> have you ever you, called you, Pete Carroll to thank him for that call? I, I have not. Mm. You know, but you know, Jimmy, football is my favorite sport uh, because you have to be a real man to play the sport. I didn't have the courage to play the sport, but every Sunday I'm in front of my television on the phone with my bookie. <laughs> <laughs> Can you say your bookie's name? Just the first name. Uh, no, no, you know, hey, hey, listen, they got some good people. They'll track people down. <laughs> you can't do that, Jimmy, on national television, man. I'm not trying to get anybody busted. Are you in the bubble right now, Charles? I know you're not in Orlando, but are you, like, staying home, not going anywhere, following the rules? Yeah, it sucks, Jimmy. I'll be so glad when these playoffs are over, man. It's what? been hell. I've been stuck in this Atlanta bubble for, like, two months now. And my life sucks right now. I'll it be does. so glad when these next two weeks are over. It's just been awful. Now, when he was playing, Kobe Bryant said that he loved playing away games because he fed off the negative energy from the opposing crowd. Did you feel the same way? There was only a couple of people that were jackasses uh, to me, really. Uh -huh. I mean, and first of all, Kobe should have taken number one, rest in peace, to one of the greatest to ever do it. Yes. But listen... You know, when 
when they booing you on the road, it's a sign of respect and admiration because they don't boo the other guys on the team who can't play. They only boo, boo the stars. <laughs> so if they're booing you as a star, you should take that as a real badge of courage because, hey, they don't boo the guys on the bench. They only boo the stars. So that's actually a great compliment. There's a famous heckler. I, the guy's name was Robin something. Do you know who I'm talking about? Yeah, Robin yeah. Uh, Ficker. He was actually, I had a lot of respect for him because he never cursed. Uh-huh. And, and he knew everything about every player. Uh-huh. And I had made the mistake, uh, not a mistake, but I had made a mistake of writing a couple books when I played. And he stand back there and say, you can, on Charles Barkley said on page 72, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. And the whole bench is laughing. The coach is laughing. He was really, he was really funny. Is he it, was a good heckler, I'm not going to lie. Is it true that you flew him out to Phoenix for the express purpose of having him heckle Michael Jordan? Well, two things. Number one, no. No, okay. Uh, but secondly, if you know Michael Jordan, you don't want to piss him off. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't want to piss Michael off. The last thing I want... Listen, I should tell our fans, shh, shh, don't upset this guy. He doesn't need any more motivation. Your first NBA team, the Sixers, have honored you with a statue. This is a statue of Charles Barkley, and I'm curious as to whether or not you get any say in what the statue looks like. Well, I've been very fortunate to get two statues, one at, and with the Sixers and one at my college at Auburn. I just say, make it skinny. That's all I got <laughs> in the past, Jimmy. Make it skinny. Is that right? the right thing to do? Because if I was getting a statue, I'd say, make it as fat as possible so that when people see me in real life, they go, oh, he looks great. No, because at the time they did these statues, I was skinny. I'm only fat now. Hi, Jimmy. <laughs> I used to be skinny. I can't help it that I'm fat now. Father time is taking its toll on me. Is it true that Moses Malone used to get on you about your weight and he used to really monitor what you were eating? You know, he's the most important person in my basketball career. I went to him one day because I wasn't getting to play. And I said, Moses, why am I not getting to play? He says, you fat and you lazy. <laughs> I'm like, what? What, what? what do you mean? He says, you're fat and lazy. <laughs> and this guy, who's one of the best ever, took me on his wing, Jimmy, and he made me lose 50 pounds and made me a great player. But a couple times, we lived in the same building. Uh -huh. And he had told the security people Anytime I order pizza to call him. So like on two or three different occasions, I order pizza. And the next thing I know, I'm getting all excited for my pizza. And there's a big old 16 guy knocking on the door with my pizza in his hand. And he's already eating it. So that wasn't a lot of fun for me. <laughs> but very considerate of Moses to eat your pizza. Are you still hitting those Krispy Kreme donuts there in Atlanta? Oh, yeah. I'm telling you, Jim, when you drive by that side and they say it's hot, yeah. you get your car just automatically goes there, man. It should be illegal. It's no, it should be illegal. Hey, <laughs> I, I try to avoid it because if for some reason I think every time I go there, that hot side is on, and I cannot resist that hot side. <laughs> All right. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back with Charles Barkley. Stick around. I'll bet every dime I got in the world on the Lakers this series. Guaranteed. <laughs> I'm going to get, I'm going to get, the, I'm going, seriously, I'm not even joking now, Ali. I'll take, if Mike Malone want to cover it, I'll bet out whatever. Any amount of money, I'm taking the Lakers. Chuck, you don't need Mike Malone because you got the bank of Shackovia. Thank you. <laughs> hey, listen, <laughs> you, these guys act like we care who wins. Yeah, we everybody who picked win. the Clippers to beat them. Yeah, stop I it. picked them to beat the Jazz, yeah, yeah. but everybody picked them to lose to the Clippers, and if they want some motivation, I'm guaranteeing the Lakers going to kick their ass. <laughs> we are back with Charles Barkley, who is in Atlanta, who is standing by, and Charles, is Mike Malone your bookie? Did we discover the identity of this mysterious bookie? Hey, you know what? Mike Malone is a daughter. Hey, he did a terrific job with these young nuggets. What they accomplished coming back from 3-1, the first two series is incredible. But you know, Jimmy, these guys act like we care who's going to win. <laughs> like, we get paid to pick a team. I never care who's going to win. Never. But 
I never. I never care who's going to win. You know what, Jimmy? I just want this to be over so I can go fishing with you. <laughs> uh, if, I listen. Even but, if you have a good friend, do you have any friends on any of the teams that you have a particular liking for that you want them to win, or it doesn't matter? No, I'm too old for these guys. <laughs> most of these guys, hey, most of these guys weren't even born <laughs> when I was playing. Wow. So they don't they, they think I they think I'm the guy on TV. They don't even realize I actually played back in the day. <laughs> if LeBron wins with a third team, does he deserve to be spoken uh, about in the same breath as as Michael Jordan? Well, I've said this uh if they win a championship, I might put him with Kobe Bryant. In my opinion, LeBron is a great great player and a great great man. I got him one slip behind Kobe Bryant. I do. Now, if he wins this year, I might put him on the same level with Kobe. But until he wins another championship, in my opinion, he has not passed Kobe Bryant. But because of all the bubble and all the stuff that's happened this year, this would be a great accomplishment. So I might flip-flop him and Kobe. Wow, you think that this year will be a greater accomplishment than winning a typical regular season title. Yeah, you know, first of all, uh, all these parents out here have been at home with their badass kids for the last <laughs> three or four months. <laughs> so they've learned how bad their kids were. That's the first thing. And secondly, these guys have been stuck in the bubble uh, not being able to leave for two to three months. That's a great accomplishment. I mean, if you can deal with your kids for three or four months being at home with them every day, <laughs> then get shipped to the bubble for two or three months and be stuck around the same people and not be able to get out eating that same food every day, that's a great accomplishment. All right, all right. One last Krispy Kreme question. How many, what's the most you've eaten in one sitting? Well, one day uh, I ate a dozen, but I broke it out throughout the day, Jimmy. Okay, all right. I, I ate breakfast. <laughs> Lunch and dinner. Right. I didn't want to eat all 12 of them at the same time, <laughs> but I broke it up into breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I like that. It, it shows a lot of self-discipline. <laughs> Charles Barkley, thank you so much. The NBA Western Conference Finals continue. Game three, Lakers versus Nuggets tomorrow night on TNT. Thank you, Charles. We'll be back with the chicks. Congratulations on making it to the end of a YouTube video. Why not celebrate by clicking the subscribe button? You earned it.